But either way, at that point, I just figured he's a liar and I don't really want to work for him. Yep, you heard him right. This humble farmer from West Babylon openly called Gordon Ramsay a liar, and well, that's only one of the craziest things that he said. Andrew has got to be one of the strangest chefs to have ever been on the show. In fact, he stated that he had no regrets leaving the competition. According to him, the idea of working as a liar's head chef straight up repulsed him, and he gave some kind of self-righteous justification for quitting the show. There's a story in the Bible where you know, a man walks away from, from Sodom and, and you're not supposed to look back. And that's the way that I live my life. If I walk away, I'm not going to walk back. And well, that is just the beginning of his craziness, you guys. I mean, you won't believe some of the claims that he's made. Like, after throwing vitriol at Chef Ramsay on the show, as it turns out, Andrew went on to work at a barbecue and smokehouse. Although his profile says that he's worked there for just a year, the man proudly claims to have graduated from the Culinary Institute of America. But for someone who was so confident in his skills, let me remind you that he was the first contestant to get kicked out of the kitchen. You don't care, you got no respect, and you know what? You're a fucking joke to the industry. So here's what went down. During his second dinner service, Andrew was on the garnish station. He was extremely focused to the point that he started talking to himself while pushing Mikey away. Stay right there, stay hot. What the fuck are you doing? Go away, go away, go away, go away, go away. Oh yeah, dude was in way over his head pretty literally. However, his monologue raised a few eyebrows, and his team started to worry about his erratic behavior. Andrew was doing great on garnishes, and then uh, all of a sudden he flipped his lid. What do you need? What do I need? I need to get out of the fucking weeds, that's what I need. What the hell do you think I need? Then, when he asked Benjamin for a time on the salmon, sous chef Scott reminded him that the garnishes had to be ready before the proteins. I don't care if I get the salmon last, I want to make sure the garnish is ready. Holy shit! Yes, yeah, chef, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. So, what did he do? He immediately started rushing while asking Jay to send the mashed potatoes to the pass for him. He also started rushing the rest of his garnishes. Any guesses how that turned out? Well, the mashed potatoes were sent back for being too runny. There you go. There's our mashed potato. There you fucking go. But of course, Andrew already had a plan. He took the batch and started mixing them with a fresh batch that he was making to adjust the consistency and nobody would be the wiser, right? But obviously, Chef Ramsay didn't approve of his little hack. Don't do it! Oh no! Why? Come here, you idiot! Let me fucking explain why! Now this is where things are about to get wild. Andrew stood defiantly against Chef Ramsay immediately. But throughout the conversation, Chef Ramsay patiently attempted to explain the issue and didn't just berate him. However, Andrew countered, insisting that what he did was nothing short of brilliant. He put the thick stuff in, you had the runny to it. That was a brilliant idea, Chef. That's a brilliant idea, Chef. Like, the arrogance, you guys. To make things even worse, Andrew couldn't break from the nonsense he was spouting. The back and forth continued with Andrew expressing disagreement and even questioning whether he should continue using a sauté pan. Like seriously, what was he thinking? Of course, tensions escalated after this and Chef Ramsay reached his limit. But despite making that extremely clear, Andrew just kept talking back. We're serving liquid fucking mashed potatoes. That's not gonna make any ounce of difference there, it's gone. That's not true. Uh-huh, he was asking for trouble, and that's exactly what he got. The situation reached its climax as Chef Ramsay made a decisive move. He escorted Andrew out of the kitchen and into the dining room. Now, it wasn't a direct ejection, but Chef Ramsay completely humiliated him in front of his competitors and, of course, the diners. Get out. Yeah, fuck off. Damn, i dig a hole and bury myself on the spot if that was me. Well, back in the dining room, Andrew stood on the verge of leaving when Jean-Philippe attempted to persuade him to stay. JP suggested that Ramsay was merely testing him, and many others would willingly trade places with him. However, Andrew remained unmoved and was still completely disinterested in returning. That man asked me to leave, and you expect me to stay here? He's just testing you. Well, I'm sure Chef Ramsay would side with his decision. By the way, if you noticed, he also has no understanding of metaphors whatsoever. What's more, he kicked off his shoes, offering them to anyone willing to fill his position, and made a definitive exit from Hell's Kitchen through the front door. I don't know how many people willing to be in your shoes now. You know what? They I mean, take my shoes. I don't need this. I mean, JP's reaction was hilarious. My man was too stunned to speak. 
Anyway, in his exit interview, Andrew candidly stated that he had no problem being viewed as the villain. He also asserted his indifference to Chef Ramsay's opinion. I'm sure he looks at me as a little prick. You know, whatever. I, I don't really care what Chef Ramsay thinks of me. Have a nice day. Like, bro, we've known you for like, what, two seconds at this point? Calm down. But let's talk facts now. How many of you have ruined mashed potatoes during Thanksgiving, huh? I'll admit, the first time that I made them. Yeah, it was just about as bad as what Andrew threw down. But sorry to say, Andrew's idea of fixing them was total bogus. Unless he was planning to simply cook a couple more, rice them, and fold them into the loose batch he already had. In my case, I had to tighten them up with some cornstarch. It wasn't exactly pretty, but it got the job done. Now here's a pro tip I came across for fixing those runny mashed potatoes. Turns out, all you have to do is just consider adding some dehydrated potatoes to the mix. Once incorporated into your batch, the combination of liquid and heat during the cooking process helps rehydrate them. This makes the consistency thick and fluffy. Well, totally makes sense, doesn't it? But what exactly is your go-to method of fixing mashed potatoes? Do not forget to share your cooking hacks in the comments section down below, cause who knows, maybe we can teach Andrew a thing or two. Anyway, back to Andrew. This is where it gets really, really controversial. Just like the other contestants, Jen Yamola and Tech Moore, Andrew has also echoed a ton of sentiments over the years about the highly distorted and manipulated nature of the show. That whole basis is set up to make you fail. I can't tell you how many times at night they threw away my food that I had to remake. Ooh, scandalous. I mean, it's no secret that the environment in Hell's Kitchen is incredibly taxing for chefs vying for Gordon Ramsay's executive chef position. The unhealthiness goes way beyond just the physical demands. The stress of the competition, characterized by sleepless nights, constant scrutiny, and being berated for even the smallest errors in front of the cameras and microphones, pushes many chefs towards coping mechanisms like cigarettes and alcohol. And here's the thing, did you know that when they're hungry, they have to cook their own meals? I guess it's not something major for experienced chefs, but after enduring a grueling 19 hours on their feet, don't you think they deserve a little break while they're off camera? But to make things even more challenging, contestants believe that the producers mess with the cooking appliances as well. I mean, how else do you explain what happened with Andrew? In the first episode, I watched him turn down my oven. The whole show, it's a manipulated, distorted view of reality. See, if Andrew is telling the truth, then it makes you wonder what other aspects of the show have been edited to such an extent. For one, every time they added horror music when he spoke, I found that kind of corny. You guys love me for my heavily edited thumbnails, but even I have to draw the line somewhere. You know, it's a shame that they missed the best part of me walking off uh, before I walked off and they seem to have edited that part out. Now, this gets me thinking. With so many edits, there's a possibility that he was intentionally made to look creepy. So, was he an oddball? Hmm, could be. I'm not ruling that out entirely. But many viewers have also called him a sociopath, and I, for one, am not a big fan of pathologizing people we only know through reality TV. I mean, comments like this guy is definitely a serial killer are really dumb and way out of line. What's your opinion though? Anyway, here's something you need to know about the guy. Andrew's journey to Hell's Kitchen wasn't driven by any personal burning ambition to be on the show, which he openly admitted. Being that I didn't necessarily want to be on that show in the beginning, it wasn't that I put forth the effort um, Pamela Miller did, you know, it was just not worth my time to stay there. Actually, he was persuaded by the waitress that he worked with. And despite Andrew's initial lack of interest, she kept insisting that he should participate. One day, in response to her prodding, he essentially said, So I thought, what do I have to lose in filling out an application? So I figured at that point, you know, I mean, let's just go and find out. Seizing the opportunity, the waitress informed Andrew that applications were being accepted and promptly requested his bio. Andrew, in a matter of 30 minutes, penned down the necessary details, handed it over to the waitress, who then forwarded it to the right channels. And just like that, he found himself on the show. His decision seemed to be guided by a why not attitude, perhaps driven by the thought, what do I have to lose? And what happened when he finally made it to the show? He formed some really strong opinions of Chef Ramsay. Control by fear is the weakest form of control that a man can possess. You certainly have to appreciate his guts though. Not everyone has the stones to call Chef Ramsay, of all people, a tyrant. But it wasn't just this, Andrew hated Chef Ramsay's arrogance too. In another interview with Gina from Reality Wanted, he revealed, I learned a lot about myself. I did not like the way that man spoke to me. It makes me very mindful of how I'm going to speak to another individual even when I'm upset. 
If I learned anything from Chef Ramsay, I learned that I don't want to be him. Wow, that's a pretty strong statement right there. I mean, seriously, Andrew here seems to be a man of convictions. I'm sure, you know, he's a nice man, he treats his family well, but I certainly don't want to work with him. And you might have noticed that Gordon Ramsay does get away with a lot of stuff. Well, simply because he is Gordon Ramsay, but that doesn't mean he's always in the right. Now here's an interesting story from back in the day. Australian journalist Tracy Grimshaw in 2009 hit back at Chef Ramsay calling him an arrogant narcissist. Wondering why? Well, watch this. But during weekend cooking exhibitions, he dubbed this pig woman slide Tracy. I'm in love with Tracy Grimshaw. I've been sued for the last 10 years. And I'm not going to sit meekly and let some arrogant narcissist bully me. Get it? Chef Ramsay stunned a live audience by unleashing a string of insults at Grimshaw in her absence, calling her a lesbian and likening her to a pig. Truly, I wonder how many people would laugh if they were described as an old, ugly pig. Yep, people are quick to defend Ramsay's brand of humor, but sometimes he's just plain cruel. Obviously, Gordon thinks that any woman who doesn't find him attractive must be gay. For the record, I don't, and I'm not. Let's be honest, she owned him here. In fact, here's a very interesting perspective, something to think about. A Redditor said, if celebrities like Gordon Ramsay were women, people would have different opinions of them. Every time I watch someone like Gordon, I can't help but wonder if the public perception of someone that loud, rude, and obnoxious would be different if the genders were swapped. I scroll through the comments of most of his Kitchen Nightmares episodes, and even in situations when he's obviously being overly aggressive, people are cheering for him and quoting him and praising his attitude. I think if a public female figure acted the same way, she'd be labeled as rude, overbearing, a Karen, or even a diva. Well, that's certainly some food for thought, am I right? Now, let me know if you agree in the comments section down below. But anyway, Andrew further stated to Gina that Chef Ramsay set them up to fail for entertainment's sake. He said in no way, shape, or form did he help us become better cooks. And the conversations with Chef Ramsay during the reward lunches? How many ladies have you slept with? I don't know. <laughs> Roughly. <laughs> when know. did you stop counting? He said everything was superficial and shallow with no depth and no meaning. And guess what? He also said that before coming on a season, he never really watched the show. And you know what? That makes sense, because otherwise he would have known better than to talk back to Chef Ramsay. But even if he did his research, that wouldn't change anything. He said, if I didn't walk out in the second episode, I would have walked out in the fifth. I know my self-worth. I don't need to justify it. I don't need to prove myself to any man I'm not gonna grovel. You clearly have me mistaken for somebody else. Wait, is he insinuating that most contestants end up becoming a bunch of bootlickers? But no, I wouldn't want to walk back underneath that man. Like Jason say that he's a great chef and all I want to do is work underneath him. That's just not the way that I feel. But wait, there's more. Andrew also stated that he wanted to confront Chef Ramsay and tell him three important things. One of the things, well, three things that I would say to him. Control by fear is the weakest form of control that a man can possess. If a man doesn't first obtain self-control, he can't control anything else. Inconsistency was the only consistency in his kitchen. Okay, at this point, he seems like a relatively rational person to me. So, were the edits really out of place? One viewer seemed to think so. He said, I saw a video that showed a news station interviewing Andrew, and honestly, he seems like a pretty cool guy. The psycho editing just kind of made him look creepy, but he seems pretty normal to me in that interview. And regarding what Andrew said, we can debate about whether Ramsey's behavior on the show is abusive or performance demanding all day long. However, I think celebrity worship is dangerous, and Gordon Ramsay shouldn't be exempt from criticism. There are definitely many studies that prove that compassionate leadership is way more effective than the combative style that Chef Ramsay encourages. Chef Stevie Parl, owner of multiple London restaurants including Palatino and Kraft London, once tweeted criticizing Ramsay's aggressive bullying. He wrote, Glamorizing this kind of bullshit really sets us back. No wonder we can't find any chefs. And here's another example. Trevor Gulliver, co-founder of London Restaurant Group in St. John, promotes a calm and respectful kitchen policy. He has been quoted saying, a happy kitchen means happy customers, particularly in an open kitchen. Why then, I wonder, is there such a tradition of hostility in the kitchen? A lot of these chefs put themselves under pressure, he continues. They have a perception of what a chef should be, driven by television it would seem, rather than being driven by how they feel as a person and the environment in which they want to work. 
Dominique Anzel, an American baker, shared that just like Chef Ramsay, he grew up working in the kitchens of France where yelling and screaming were the norm. It was the old school way, he said, and I was cursed at, burned by spatulas, and it was a really tough environment to be in. So I knew that someday, if I had my own place, I would never bring this sort of behavior into my kitchens. And I agree. Just because you had it hard doesn't mean you should continue the cycle of abuse, right? Let me know what you think, though. Frankly, the angry chef trope is dying, and I think even Chef Ramsay realizes that. In his newer seasons, he's much more mellowed out, and rarely does he insult someone's height, weight, or question their passion. Hey, you're not a fucking cook either. And if you find jokes at the expense of other people funny, then you gotta take a long hard look at yourself. At the end of the day, you gotta ask yourself, is this show glorifying abuse in the kitchen? Is it advocating for ruthless perfectionism at the expense of mutual camaraderie? And lastly, did you get those two walk-in coolers, Andrew? Sorry, I couldn't help it with that one. Please tell me you got the context. If you forgot, then here's a little refresher. Right, now, what is that? A steak tartare. In the signature dish challenge, Andrew was the last contestant from the blue team awaiting Chef Ramsay's judgment. His culinary opponent for this round was Nilka. Andrew confidently presented a steak tartare, accompanied by a revelation that he takes pride in raising and butchering his own animals. Listen to his words. I guess the inspiration from that came from the fact that I've raised and butchered my own animals, and I like to eat them raw. Yeah, that statement was creepy, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But I'm more worried about how unsafe eating raw meat is. Like, what is his digestive system made of? And what would he do if he won Hell's Kitchen? When I win this competition, I'm gonna buy two walk-in coolers. That's all I really want, It's two walk-in coolers. See? Anyway, the steak tartare, however, didn't quite hit the mark. It drew criticism from Ramsay for its blandness, but he earned quite the nickname. Are you some form of house Kitchen Hannibal Lecter? Maybe. In the dorms, Andrew took on the role of a motivational speaker, persuading his teammates that they were all capable cooks and urging them to embrace confidence. He went on to express how he wasn't intimidated by Chef Ramsay and stated that the quality of the food they were serving wasn't all that impressive. Well, we didn't get here because we don't know how to cook food. I'm not intimidated by Chef Ramsay. Food that we're serving down there in that kitchen, that's really not that good. I am not saying that Andrew cooks better, but you'll be shocked that many, many customers think that the food in Hell's Kitchen is bad for the price. In case you need a more detailed review of the food they served, be sure to check out this video right here. Now let's talk about the Egg Relay Challenge when Andrew teamed up with Scott as the third pair for the blue team. They managed to secure acceptance for three out of their four eggs. Soft boiled egg. Who cooked it? Cooked it, chef. Because it's hard on the top. Regardless, the blue team emerged victorious in a close competition, sealing the win with a final score of 11 to 10. After this came the epic crash and burn at the garnish station that I talked about in the beginning of the video. How was he as a chef? One out of five, really, solely based on how he performed on the two challenges and one disaster of a service. However, he actually wasn't shown during his service at the meat station. Maybe because he didn't make any glaring mistakes. In fact, when three of his teammates were kicked out, the blue team merged with the red team to serve all the remaining customers and the former one. I mean, when it comes to his personality, please remember that behind the fabrications, he really seems like a level-headed guy who came to the show with lots of humility. Wisdom and knowledge, I hope to take away. That's the most realistic thing that you can walk away from it with, you know, but if I can walk away knowing a little bit more than when I came, regardless of what that knowledge is, then I succeeded. Digging into it, I found that people who have known him personally vouch for him. But what exactly is he up to now? I found a comment saying that he's the general manager and head chef at the Fire Pit, which is a small but amazing establishment in Wake Forest. The viewer went on to say that Andrew is a very good man and honestly, he got what he wanted. Something small, some place that has the cheers effect. And guess what? He also actively took part in hosting special community events to celebrate the bounty of fresh produce, meats, berries, and honey at the local farmer's market. What's more, he also laid out a five-course farm-to-table menu to showcase a variety of local-grown seasonal ingredients. And that wasn't all. The pamphlet proudly claimed that all profits would be forwarded to fund the local educational programs and culinary events in and around Wake Forest. Now, apart from this, if anyone has ever eaten at his restaurant, I definitely want to know if Andrew had what it took to be on the show, or was he just a fluke? 
Now, make sure to let me know in the comments section down below. And if you thought this video was interesting, make sure to leave me a like, hit subscribe, and ring that bell notification to make sure you're getting notified as soon as my latest videos drop. And check out my social media pages if you want to keep up with me every step of the way. But wait, I've got another mind-blowing video right here. Believe me, it's even crazier.